Welcome to Optimal Game State. Today we are going to talk about the Trice, Trice Fold Discord, which is one of the six new warbands that appeared in White Dwarf. So this would have been part of Death Gorge, uh, so this is one of the core boxes, and uh, we've just got the rules for Warcry uh, turning up in White Dwarf. This is quite a cool warband. It's got uh, three Slanesh heroes. So this is a warband of three heroes. Uh, and they all hate each other <laughs> and uh, love and delight when one of the others fails or doesn't succeed. So we'll see that uh, they've they've managed to wrap that up quite, quite thematically into it. All three of them are distinct. They've kind of got their own style, their own approach. They, as I said, they are all heroes. So any one of these can be taken by any of the Chaos Warbands. They are part, however, of the demons of Slanesh. So it's the Head Knights of Slanesh Demons Warband. Because they're all heroes, if you want to take all three of them, you are locked into that warband, and then you're going to have to take just fighters from that warband. You'll already basically have populated all of your hero slots. So keep that in mind. We'll talk about that a little bit later as we get on. The models are gorgeous. Slanesh definitely are a under underdeveloped uh, part of the game currently. Uh, but yeah, it's it's great to kind of see these models and to uh, get some rules for them. All right, let's start by looking at the plots like I normally do. We don't actually have any standout elements here. Uh, La Ziphir is the best damage for points and is the highest damage. Uh, the other two are kind of in the middle. And uh, Vexmore has fantastic wounds for his points. And Vashtis has actually got decent um, yeah, but nothing really standing out at the moment. They're all kind of in that 100 to 150 mid-range area, which isn't necessarily too desirable, but we'll see how they do. All right, we've got a bunch of abilities. So the first three are from uh, the existing warband, and then that last one is a new one that's specific to these. So this is a Bladeborn warband. They follow all the normal Bladeborn um, elements, so be aware of that. Okay, so the first one is Share Pain. Share Pain is a reaction similar to Counter, but in this case, hits will do one damage and crits will do two damage to the attacker rather than the misses. So rather than looking for your opponent to miss and do damage to them, you're actually looking for them to hit your fighter or crit your fighter, and then you do damage back to them. So it's very much the Slanesh, Pleasure and Pain uh, kind of idea. The first double is Life and Swift, so it is a nice and simple action that uh, adds three to the move characteristic for the next move action only. If you were using Rush and your move move, you get plus one to both those moves, so it would be an effective plus two. In that case, this double is slightly better by one inch. If you were looking to move and attack, though, this is far better. So you get to extend your threat range by the extra three, that can be very, very useful. The triple is Locus of Excruciation, uh, which can only be used by a hero and adds plus one strength to nearby melee attacks. Uh, so again, we've got that six inches, or we've got that six inches, and that area of effect can actually be quite big. The chaff of this warband, if you can call it that, are the 75 point demon nets who are strength three. So that little bit of a strength boost actually will help them a lot at a time. Of course, this does really depend on what you're facing off against, So, so but something to keep in mind. Uh, and yeah, okay. The, so Triumphant Tittering is the reaction for this Bladeborn Warband. So it's unique to these three fighters within the Trice Fold Discord. You... Interestingly, you don't need to have an action or use an action uh, for this particular reaction. Uh, so they can use it at any point. However, it only triggers when one of those three dies. When one of those three dies, another one gets to make a bonus move or a bonus attack action. Now, a common mistake, because it's a bit of a, a niche rule, is that you can only react to a, an incident once. So when the first one dies, the other two don't both get to take a, a bonus move or a bonus action instead you have to pick which one is going to react and the other does not get to react so over a game if all three of yours die the first time one will react second time one will react and the third time there's no one left to react so there is yeah you're only going to get two bonus actions or bonus moves out of this 
So it's not as amazing as it could be. You were kind of hoping you'd kind of get those first two. Um, but still, uh, one of the key parts of this game is that you have... Each fighter will be around for four turns at most, and you will get two activations each turn. So when you have a fighter going down, being able to trade off one of those activations onto an existing fighter can be really big. Right, the first fighter we're going to look at is Vashtis the Coiled. So this is a relatively typical caster profile. So we've got a melee ability and we've got a ranged ability. In this case, the range ability and melee ability actually average out to about the same damage. The, there is a bit of a window between that two and three inches where Vashtis isn't able to take an attack. Now, there are a few fighters in the game that do have a range three attack, but they are relatively rare. So most warbands won't be able to take advantage of that kind of dead zone that they have. The ability, yeah, the ability for each is, or the damage for each profile is three. With the range profiles, what I like to do is I like to imagine, um, I like to compare them getting those two attacks, uh, so that three average damage, three average damage, so six across the th turn, to moving up and then an attacking with a melee action. So if you look at it that way, then that six damage is actually decent. However, that seven range is relatively tight. So you might find it quite difficult to be able to leverage that fully. And in that case, you are having to move. Um, it will keep Vashtis a little bit safer, but yeah, it's maybe not as uh, not as desirable as we might hope. The abilities they have, so the double is a net-like ability, but unfortunately not the kind of net ability we're looking for. So until the end of the battle round, enemy fighters cannot disengage when in melee with Vashtis. That means they will still be able to attack Vashtis. Vashtis has three toughness and 16 wounds, it's not 10 wounds, but 16 wounds is definitely killable. So you're not going to be able to go up to uh, like one of their big bruisers and uh, lock them down like you really want to. With the net effects, like the optimal play is to net a fighter and then make sure no one is in melee with them so they can't actually attack anyone. This isn't the option for this. Now, well, the ability does actually do damage as well, which is quite nice. So you've got if you've got a double six, this ability will do uh, three damage, so half the, the ability value, to everyone within melee with this fighter. It only triggers at the end of the round, though, which I have to admit I'm not really a fan of from a design perspective. Uh, it is something that you might forget. So you might trigger the ability, and then you'll go to your end phase, and you'll just do a tidy up bits, and you move on to the next turn. And then halfway through the next turn, you'll realize, wait, no, we were supposed to do some damage. Stuff like that is annoying, is frustrating. I just don't like it. Like We could have the damage resolve immediately. Uh, and would like really simplify the, the actual play experience. Nonetheless, it's probably thematic. The, you know, the coils... The tentacles wrap out, and then if they don't manage to escape by the end of the turn, the secreted acid, you know, cuts into them, or however you want to do it. Of more interest for me is the, the other double. So this is the generic double for the warband, Discordant Disruption. So until the end of the battle round, subtract one from your tax characteristics. Um, this, oh, this I like. I, it is going to be a six-inch bubble, and because of the way the bubbles work it's from the edge of the base and your base is probably going to be uh, you know two inches or so wide so you're talking about a 14 inch diameter circle you can also use a pass action to activate the ability and then take another action to activate it again. So within that bubble, you're going to be reducing the attack characteristics of uh, enemy fighters. And it does say attack actions. It's not just melee attack actions as well, which is nice. Uh, you're going to be reducing by two. That could be you know, game winning, like if you're able to just completely neutralize that. In addition, if they do manage to kill Vashtis, this effect is still in play. So that's, you know, that's that's kind of fun. Uh, in theory, you could double these up, but the placing will be really tricky. You know, 
the enemy would have to actually be in attacking against, sorry, the Coil Lash and the Discordant Disruption. You could also double up the Coiled Lash, so it'll be two um, attacks. Uh, but, you know, to do that, you'll have to already be in melee at the start of the turn and, um, and then, yeah, do a weight action, which maybe I don't feel is necessarily an optimal play in that particular scenario. Anyway, it is interesting. I do quite like the sort of discordant disruption. I think that's something that can uh, give you a lot of control in the battlefield. The second fighter, which I really, really like, is La Visier, the bladed or the Blade Blessing. So this is a fast fighter with move six. The wounds are quite good for the points, and the attack is actually decent. Um, so getting five average damage, you'd normally get it for about 125, I think. And uh, the premium cost for moving for that six move can be quite high. So we're doing really, really well out of these numbers, as far as I can see. Um, interestingly, because she's low strength she's doing that five damage against pretty much everything so um yeah it, it, it doesn't matter where she's going up against because she's she's doing high damage with low strength and uh, it she might as well be 10 strength if that makes sense um now the ability unique to uh, the visir is the bladed blessing so they make a bonus melee attack action. You subtract five from the toughness characteristic of the target uh, for that. So first off, you're getting an extra attack. So that's an extra five average damage. The toughness is getting reduced by five. If that's bringing it under two, which it almost certainly will, uh, so like a seven will be brought down to a two, then the Vizier is doing nine damage instead of five. That means that particular ability is getting an extra nine, which is kind of two attacks out of this fighter. I absolutely love it. So moving up and then dropping a triple, she's going to be doing, they are going to be doing, Slanesh, remember, uh, it's going to be doing 14 damage. So move in and then do 14 damage. Amazing. I really, really like this. I think this is this is very, very cool. Um, obviously, only three toughness, sixteen wounds. But you know, if they if they can kill fast enough, maybe they can get out. Uh, weirdly enough, this isn't the one uh, that people are interested in at the moment. It is Vexmore that people are concerned by. Now, uh, based on my estimation, the raw stats here are worth about one hundred fifty-five points. The wounds actually make up the bulk of this as 25 wounds is something you'd normally see on a 200 plus uh, cost warrior fighter. Along with that toughness, this fighter is going to be pretty hard to kill. Now, it's the weapon profile that has people concerned. So it's 10 strength and uh, has you know does 5 and 10 damage. That looks really scary. But it is only one die. So it averages out to 4.1 damage. That doesn't sound so bad, but it looks scary when you've got the five and the 10. The thing about the toughness, uh, as we talked before with Lavisier, low strength, once you've gone, once you're already low strength, you don't really care how high they get. Similarly with uh, high strength, if their toughness is, you know, two, three, four, it doesn't really matter. Like you just need to be higher than it to get the benefits of strength. Uh, so yeah, arguably it is something that we might see later or in, in a future edition where they will have it if you, like with Blood Bowl, if you have strength and toughness equal, or they yeah, compare strength, but if you have strength and toughness equal, you would, you know, roll a certain number. If you've got it higher, you'll roll a better number. So that's more cry as it is. But there's another option where if you double it, or if you're, you know, ahead by two or something like that, you would get an extra bonus. So you might have a case down the line where if we are a six strength fighter facing off against a three toughness fighter, where we would actually be hitting on twos. It could happen, you know, 
uh, or maybe you end up critting on fives as well. Anyway, that that is just a way to kind of give a little more granularity. Right now, it is just a very binary. Are you equal or greater or less? And then, so yeah, the fact that this is 10 is kind of ridiculous. I think it's partially a bit of a joke. There are actually no fighters that I'm aware of beyond uh, toughness eight. So yeah, they could have had this as nine rather than 10, but yeah, it is. Uh, it, it, I think I think this was to be scary, and with one dice, it's to be going to be highly random. So right now, if you roll a one or two, it's zero damage. If you roll three, four, five, you're going to do five damage, and on a six, you do ten. So it's a bit of a gamble, but you're probably expecting to roll three, four, five, and get five damage in. So you know that's that's pretty good. Where this fighter actually starts to get even more scary is once you capitalize on the fact that it is only one dice so if you onslaught with this fighter you're going to get an extra dice out of it now you're at two dice so now you're doing an average of uh 8.2 uh, you're probably going to do 10 damage. You're hoping to roll a 3, 4, or 5, or 3, 4, 5. You're obviously, you're hoping to get two sixes and just do 20 damage and just blow something out of the water. But chances are, with two dice, you're probably going to do about 10 damage. Uh, you know, can't 100% rely on it, but I think you can reasonably expect it. On top of that, what we can also do is we can get the Divine Blessing of Ferocity and give this fighter a permanent plus one attack dice. So that will cost 30 points. And that's possibly a reason why Vexmore has so many wounds, as 22 points is that threshold. Uh, and over 22, that uh, blessing costs 30 rather than the 25 it did before. Now, all of that said, we're talking about here of a 180-point fighter doing a good chunk of damage it's very spiky damage um, i'm like the average is out so if, if you give that blessing and you give um you know you devote a double to it then you're looking at 12.3 you're probably doing 15 damage when you attack uh, and yeah if you're in melee and you get a double attack like the numbers can be scary but we already have that uh, so, for comparison, if you look at the Fulmeroy Crusher, which does regularly appear in the top chaos list, it is 260 points. So it's an extra 80 beyond the 180 we're talking about. Um, but it does have more wounds at 35. It actually has better damage before any blessings with an average of 10. Uh, and more importantly, it is move 5 rather than that painfully slow move 3 for Vexmore. So the move 3 is actually the biggest concern because... If you have to spend your doubles on getting that plus three to move to actually get into combat, which you can do, then you're not able to use the ability to uh, get the extra attack dice on the actual attack. Um, based on that, I honestly am inclined to stick with the Fomeroid, but I do feel Vexmore has a place here. Um, it's just kind of a different variant of it. So, yeah, I do think Vexmore is probably going to be an interesting fighter to take as a hero for other Chaos Warbands, but I don't think it is going to replace the Fulmeroid Crusher because that is a, a, a beast right now. Now, uh, Vexmore does have a special quad. It's called Undignified Effort, uh, and you add two to the attack's characteristics in the next melee attack. I actually don't think it's very good. If you take a move an attack action with a rampage um while it's just one dice yeah it's not going to be as good so uh, this is going to be a case where you <sighs> how to say it if you need the move then the rampage is going to be better right if you don't, then adding two to the tax characteristic of next melee attack action, you're probably in an attack attack scenario. So there's a very tight window where this is actually better than an onslaught if you're already melee, or a rampage if you're not melee. And that window is where you're exactly uh, four inches away from your target. So you're able to move that three, then use the quad to get the extra two attacks. 
that also kind of falls apart once you actually bring the divine blessing in, uh, which will give you the extra plus one attack. In which case, then rampage is just better. So, yeah, I I I know people are talking about you can get the extra attacks here, but quads generally you should ignore them. And I, in this case, I don't actually think this quad is very good, even when you would use it. Very very tight window. So yeah, the the numbers on this profile is what people are kind of scared by. I applaud design for doing this. I think it's a it's an interesting fighter to bring in and to kind of play around with. You know, it is, um, yeah. Because I, I always look at the averages. I always talk about the averages, but this is a high uh, randomness scenario where you know you could just do ten damage, and yeah, if you've got your your set an extra attack dice like in theory you can do 20 damage but you're more likely to do no damage whatsoever so you're more more likely to roll a one and a two on two dice than you are two sixes but you know it's it's interesting so as i said i do think this has a place it is a cheap fighter that can do a spiky amount of damage and interesting amount of damage but yeah i think i would be sticking with the form ride if you were to take those three fighters, you are then locked into this warband. There are only five other fighter options that you can take. That's the Fiend, the Demonette, and the mounted options. Um, I think I would probably just get a bunch of demons or demonettes. Uh, I have to admit, I don't really know this particular warband, but I can see that a box of demonettes in plastic has 10 in total, and with seven of them, or is it eight? Well, I think with eight of them, you get to a warband of exactly 1k points. And uh, yeah, that's, that could be a lot of fun, quite frankly. As I said, uh, we don't actually have enough slaneshi things, and it's kind of nice to see a little bit more. I was talking about Vexmore and the extra points. So uh, if if we take him at 150 points, he is actually very similar to that White King. So three move, 25 wounds. The damage profile looks very, very different, but that's four dice versus one dice. And the averages are actually uh, pretty similar. Um, so yeah, the... Vexmore is doing 4.1, where the White King is actually doing a little bit better. He's doing 6 average damage, but without that spike potential. If we get that extra blessing, so it'll bring damage up to, again, potentially, you're probably getting 10, but you could roll a... F like our average is going to be four or 8.2, essentially. And the Retributor Prime is kind of in that similar scenario once you go to that. Uh, and yeah, roughly the same points. So th these are things that we have seen already. The spikiness of Vexmore is going to be the, the scary bit. Um, but we have seen fighters in the environment already that are doing similar for similar points. Um, but that's, yeah, it's all, all averages. So when you're playing Vexmore, obviously it's just going to roll ones and twos all the time when you're playing against vexmore they're just going to be rolling sixes all the time and you're just going to get blown out of the water with 20s it'll happen um but that's because we always remember the things that uh, end up bad for us rather than the things that end up randomly good for us i quite like this warband um, i think to a certain extent we are seeing design maybe mess around a little bit and kind of take a few risks and a few chances i applaud that i like it i am a little frustrated i have to admit that this particular warband didn't come separate from yeah so it when the boxes get updated there it's obviously a premium i think it's about 80 uh, 80 euros uh, probably 100 dollars and maybe i don't know 60 60 pounds i can't remember what conversions are it's a chunk of money and part of that goes because there's boards and there's dice and like those boxes are a great way to to get in but if you just want that one warband it's a little bit of a pain um the other one in this particular box is sirene's razor claws it's called 
um, and there are some Eidnid Deepkin, and I think they've got a squid or an octopus. Yeah, they've got some interesting stuff in it too. It's all very nautical themed for some unknown reason, uh, but you know, beautiful models and very characterful. Anyway, that's this for this warband. Um, I don't think they're going to shake things up a lot. I do think uh, Vexmore could be a lot of fun, and I do think there could be an interesting Slanesh demon warband in there that wasn't there before. So that's certainly a good thing. Thanks for making it all the way to the end. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. Each week I put up a new video talking about one of Games Workshop's specialist games. The goal is always to try and make the best possible two-player experience. If this is something you'd find interesting, please subscribe to the channel and comment to let me know what you'd like to see in future.